While I've been gone, Eros has been bad, but he has been sorry about it. I'm giving my dad a hand with the project out here. We had to replace this tier because the old one was just shot and leaking. We're, as long as we're at it, we're uh, trenching in a water source to fill the fountain when we need to. Some hand trenching work. I know I would appreciate a hand with a project like this. It's definitely a two-person job to tip that thing up and get the pipe working again. And so it's actually working now. There it goes. And then I'm now going to turn this valve off and go open the other one. You know that we came from. Yeah, yeah. It's fun to work together on projects like this. Yeah, so we've got a baby and her mom deer out there eating from one of the fruit trees. What do you think, Mom? Oh, they're adorable. <laughs> and I don't want all these people shooting at them. <laughs> so the mommy keeps looking over here when she hears us because she's really protective. Yep, yeah, yeah, we're right by the house. And the baby's pretty house. little. Here it comes again. That, up, oh, up, up, look, did you right see over, that? Right over the hedge. That's amazing. And the baby is a little too little probably to hop over, so let's well, see what it does. The mo mommy better. No. So it's just, it overshoots, but it doesn't. Baby's going to run around the tree and find another way out. <laughs> there it goes. <laughs> Sometimes I'll take you up the driveway here, and all you want to do is just focus on this place up here, and you'll see these places here, which I dare go to here, and there's a place over there I could point out to you right where they slip through. So, so Jagan, are you? What's the best part about coming out here? Is it the dinner? Is it the cheesecake, or is it see, seeing me before I had to have to head back to Missouri? <laughs> it's a toss-up. <laughs> it's a toss-up. It's, toss it's good cheesecake, though, so I understand. It's too, too much. <laughs> Jagan's my nephew, my brother Brandon's son. One of his sons. I've got I've got family here. Nice, nice. Yeah, but he's going. His eyes are going down how fast. Yeah, Banjo's getting a little bit older. He was a puppy dog when I first met yeah, Aaron yeah. here. Aaron yeah, is yeah. a good old friend, and yeah. he did all my small engine repair work here. Best guy I know here. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Absolutely. One of the people I miss, and I definitely wanted to see when I came back here. All right, cool, man. Yeah. I appreciate you. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. He's great, doing great a lot cool. of cool things with homesteading out on a little property not too far from here. And yeah. Yeah, real cool stuff. So. Yeah, very cool, very cool, and we're, hopefully we get to be neighbors here again. Wouldn't yeah. that be nice? It'll be awesome. If you ever can sell this cool. place and move back there, you're welcome. Absolutely, man. I don't think if your, if your neighbors go for sale, let us know. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Cool. So, <clears throat> yeah. I thought it might be interesting for YouTube, since you guys get to see me doing stuff and sharing some of my thoughts, what somebody else's perspective is of maybe who I am or what they think about what I'm doing and what I've been doing. Oh, I'd say Brian is definitely the best person I've ever known. Hands down, biggest heart, biggest and most understanding person who's put up with the small engine repair world. <laughs> well, yeah, there's always delays and, you know, things yeah. come up, but... Uh, yeah, very, very, very good person, man. Very good. Yeah. Hello to Wendy. Yeah. And... Uh, I'm gonna miss you. Oh, I'll miss you too. A lot more sirens here than we have back in Missouri. Really? Well, yeah. Yeah. It's it's nice to touch base with good old friends and good to be back here for a little while. Thank you so much. I just had lunch with Marie. She's one of my dear old friends. And old. <laughs> <laughs> not that old. Not that old. <laughs> But uh, just wonderful to reconnect while I'm back here. It's definitely somebody I wanted to see. And she Thank watches you, all my videos. Oh, I love them. Love them. I'm glad to hear it. I'm You're glad my to hear it. YouTube guy. <laughs> <laughs>
and everything that you do in it. That's I miss the farm life. But you, you, she was in Missouri when yep. she was younger. Yes, I. It was in Springfield area. Yeah, yeah, we not still too have far. family there. Right. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Brian. Yesterday was pretty fun. We went to the Air Museum, what was it called? Evergreen Air Museum in McMinnville, Oregon. And that's where they keep the Spruce Goose, giant plane, really something to see. And it was the perfect day to go there. It was Labor Day weekend, and they had stunt pilots doing an air show right across the street. You know, it looped the loops with the smoke trails and everything. You could see it right through the, the big windows. Unfortunately, my camera battery somehow was completely drained. And I wasn't able to get any footage at all. But today, we've come out to the Air Museum in Tillamook. And uh, right now, I'm standing in one of the bigger planes. Kind of fun to do this with family. Of course, I've done another video about this place, but it's fun to come back. It is, uh, it is so large of a structure. It just, you know, the camera doesn't do it justice. So you have to come here to really appreciate it. Yeah. Look how long this thing is. Yeah. I mean, how many football fields would you judge that to be, Dad? Let's see, for the fun of it. At least three, wouldn't you think? What was so interesting about that mill, too, Oh, look at this, it's an evil air stage. But anyway, where with the heat from the plant, it rained inside the hangar here. My dad got his pilot's license and had a Cessna plane for a while. What do you think, Dad? Want to ever fly one of these? You know, if you like to fly, you'd like to be able to fly every one. At that point, you wouldn't feel anything. You might, you might hear the aircraft, but you're not going to sense that you're moving. It's just like when I was skydiving. The only time you have a sense of movement is if you look back up. Otherwise, you're, you're falling, you don't feel anything. So you get close to the ground, you can start to sit. Mm -hmm. But there for a while, you don't feel anything. Yeah. That's really neat. So the, best, the best view in the world is when you are on the end of that parachute and just can see everything beautiful. Mm -hmm.
Would you be more or less likely to go up in a plane that said experimental mom? <laughs> less. <laughs> Yeah. If it's come back, so somebody else had to experiment. <laughs> it's still there, so it's still the experiment there. worked. Yeah. Now that is a uh, impressive jet there. You know, it's like I'd have, I'd try to have a plane today if it didn't compete for mowing the yard or good weather, golf, you know, all the other things you time, do. Time and, and money. And you got a $50,000 piece of equipment, that, you know. You don't get to use very much right. and I you mean, have to my, store somewhere. Yeah, well, my GTO is a good example. I mean, how much am I using it anymore? I mean, it's a yeah. shame. Yeah. Like, it's a dream that I, you know, had building that yeah. up. But imagine being able to just float up above things and just tool around oh, yeah. and. Yeah. Well, let's go to Dallas. Okay, we yeah. Have, you know, yeah. Flight. Well, what was amazing to me too is flying, taking off from Twin Oaks, and and wherever, like we drove over here in an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. But I take off. I'm over the ocean in 30 minutes. Yeah. You know, and then fly along the coast. It's just feel. You know, but, it, but, but I'm just so lucky. Was it the that sense of freedom or just uh, adventure well, yeah. or? I think yeah. I think that part of adventure. And, uh, just a childhood yeah. dream as well? Well, especially since my uncle was a World War pilot and a crop duster mm -hmm. and saw the planes. And I always knew I was going to have a plane someday, I guess, in my mind. And I did. And uh, but it, it's just, uh, yeah. well, even like you guys growing up, all the activities, you know, there's competition for time. Mm -hmm. But I think I feel so very lucky experiencing it. So we are driving down 101. And there are th at least three elk right on the road. They've got traffic stopped pretty well here. There's another one on the right side. Oh, yeah, one right in the middle of the road. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen them on the road like this before. They're just taking their time. Mm -hmm. It's like, what are these people doing on the road? Yeah, look at the size of those antlers. Second entrance into Kennedy Beach, I think, not the first one. And what do you think about the uh, the elk? Oh, those were amazing. They're so <laughs> big, and they're so like. I guess there's people on the road, but they don't even notice. So yeah, I was kind of surprised. I think they'd be more afraid of cars. Yeah, you would think. Nice day at Cannon Beach. You're on the Oregon coast. These are. This is the third year I've had these beds. The first year they, you know, they sleep. It's a beautiful. I mean, the, the difference in heights, the colors, yeah. the textures. I mean, everything is wonderful out here. Oh, thank you. Well, it's our little oasis, you know. But yeah. when we took the tree down, we had some sun. Mm -hmm. See, when the maple tree was here, this was all shade. Oh, sure, sure. You couldn't grow a damn thing. So, yeah. I mean, it's. And I keep the sprinklers on it, you know. Mm hmm And, uh, yep, kind of nice. Huh. Yeah, beautiful colors, too. Yeah. These came up by, you know. <laughs> yeah, the sunflowers are coming out everywhere here. Yeah, that's insane. <laughs> I had lots of day lilies in here, and I had some coming up right in there, big red ones. Do you get my newsletter? Yeah, yeah. So you saw the pictures. And this was really pretty when it was blooming. It was cream color. Yeah, and yeah. Bees everywhere. And another hydrangea down there. My messy studio. <laughs> <laughs> Carolyn is a wonderful gardener, a Are you great recording? artist, oh my God. and uh, an old friend. It's nice to see the place, and she's taken, she's really made a, something of this place. <laughs> and this is her studio. Sure is. Boy, I like those are ones you framed 20 years ago. Yeah, back when I was doing the picture framing. Mm -hmm. But what do you think of this? Got yeah, all the storage up nice there. Little, uh, Lots and windows that look out to the garden. Mm -hmm. 
So this is the this was the maple tree that you guys cut down? Oh yeah. I'm gonna put a new one in the middle when it, when it gets a little more rotted down. I'm gonna you know cut a hole and I've got a little that one in that nice. box that's on the patio. Tree stumps make good containers. Well I'm taking them a page out of your playbook and doing that because I like how you did yours. Yeah. And uh and you know, it needs something. But this one's not gonna I be like the sure. little birdhouses too. Look at that. Well that was on a large stump, but the stump came down when the tree fell on it. That stump there okay. had Some... that on top. And it was really cool. And Using the wood out here. But the ice storm. Yeah. It just yeah. devastated everything. Got uh, uh currents. That's a good currents size. Back over there. Yeah. Red currents back here. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, look at that. I didn't even Nobody's see Nobody's eating them. Oh, I don't goodness. know why. Yeah. So I, those are like domestic currants and then these are the native kind. One back over there. And then there's a uh, snowberry bush and two serviceberry shrubs, yeah. which I keep kind of small and they get nice blue berries on them. And oh. they're basically planted yeah. for the birds. All this whole area back here is all for the birds. And then in the back behind Steve's shop, I've got the pollinator garden. Yeah. And that's all for the, the okay. butterflies and insects and stuff like that. I kind of wish we had blueberries at our place. Mm -hmm. Sorry you caught me eating. But that's all right. Yeah, and sunflowers everywhere, all over yeah. the place. And I'm using them for bean poles, too. <laughs> I got my cucumbers, and this bed, I just kind of let it go and everything's going to seed. Yeah. So I've got onion seeds down here, lettuce seeds here, and over here are radish seeds. Um, okay. Big, huge things full of radish seeds. Yeah. So I'll harvest those and I'll be planting radish seeds. And then I've got some arugula seeds, a couple squash plants. Yeah, they're still going. There's a, what is that, a delicata, and I think, yeah, this one looks like an acorn squash, maybe. See? Yep. And then there's another one over here that came up by itself, too. And this one, I think, is either an acorn squash or a pumpkin. I'm not sure. You know, see? It could yep. be a pumpkin, but it could yeah. be one of those ornamental gourds. And then the tomatoes, again, those are all volunteers. Well, I like the mix of flowers and yeah. edibles. Yeah. And this is just starting to really take off. So there's actually... I have a bean. <laughs> hey. <laughs> yeah, I've been. I haven't gotten any off of here yet. The uh, lower ones have some bush beans, and I've been getting some off of there. Look at how tall they are going. Oh, it's crazy. All the way up there. Uh huh. And just a bamboo pole I threw across there. I've been sick the last three weeks and haven't had any energy, so I didn't do a whole lot out here. Just trying to keep up with watering. What they've done, unfortunately, is they've sent all their roots up under. The beds. Mm -hmm. Okay. And That's it, where they're getting all the nutrients exactly. and water. Exactly. And so they're going crazy. And in the meantime, my stuff here, I can't keep it watered because you, you dig down, it's just dry. It's all roots. Yeah. So just let people know, don't plant next to a arborvitae hedge. <laughs> Look at these apples. Yeah, the apples are doing oh, well. Oh, wow. Year. Yep. And these sunflowers again. They're yeah. Nuts. Every day the birds come up. Well, you've just got an apple, apple bonanza here. Tomato came up in the middle of. Oh, just a volunteer out yeah, of the. Yeah, see, of and the, the whole the thing is in a, is in a, yeah. a box because we don't have any place to dig. There's no soil here, it's all just driveway, gravel. And when we moved in, it was kind of underwater. A lot of this mm -hmm. was flooded. Okay. And, uh, there wasn't a way to dig a hole and plant anything, so I bought, raised you know, beds. Yeah. Yeah. Well, those were there, and I added this one and the little ones here, but all that was already there. And uh, I bought this little box for my herbs. <laughs> what good it does me, but the compost just keeps growing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But it still keeps shrinking too. I was just telling Steve this morning, I said, it seems like the more I dig it out, the deeper the hole gets, and, the, and I put more stuff in and then it's gone again. So I keep using it up. Yep. You probably know that about compost. Compost does disappear. It's never enough. Oh, the melon. watermelon. See, it's, it's looking yeah. good. It's yeah, well, let's see what the thump sounds like. I don't know how to tell. It sounds like it's going to be nice and crisp. Okay, good. Um, yeah, 
I, I can't tell you for sure, and you've only got the one. Uh -huh. so. Well, no, there's a second one right here. Oh, okay, you got that one too. I Look got at a that. Second one, but it's still just a baby. Yep. And I've been pinching back, you know, any any extra vines, but yeah. And then these darn eggplants. This is like I have. That's can't those even are some believe good, all these eggplants. good eggplant sizes on that yeah. thing. Yeah. Look at that. Well, I've already picked like three or four of them, yeah. so I'm just letting those get a little bigger, and then my basil, and then hollyhocks more darn sunflowers and then beans so these are bush beans and i've been getting a few off of them but not too many and you know they've been kind of shrimpy not too big sure but i'm waiting it's it's gonna take warm days some more compost in the making um yes yeah yard debris we use mostly but yeah see there's another bean see there's a few yeah and i think i'm gonna let it get a little bigger and then tomatoes i can't remember if, i think that one might be one that was a volunteer too. I don't know. I think it was. Because most of the some of these I actually bought and then I planted the zinnias and the cosmos from seed. And those are just lovely. And uh, we have a well so I have the hose hooked up to the thing that makes me back. Yeah, it's nice to have a well and not have yeah. to worry about paying for water. Yes, it is. And then I just, as I come by, I always fill this little can up so I can give these guys a drink if I'm coming back to just look. Um, and this one, again, I cut the top off and I'm letting it be a bean pole. That's a good use of a sunflower. And I take all the flowers off and throw them out for the birds to eat. And they've been coming and eating them. You know, I hang them up like this. Okay. And, and they'll come out and they'll, you know, land on them and they'll take all the little seeds. Mm -hmm. So it's really cool. Well, you'll probably have sunflowers coming up other places because of that. I will always have sunflowers. I'll never run out. And then this one was taller than the shop. Oh, wow. And my friend Sam came over with this little portable chainsaw, and we took it down because it was, so, I, it was leaning way out there, and I was afraid okay. it was going to pull Just the whole... Plus access to get down your Well, yeah, your I was afraid it was going to pull the stock tank over. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> kind of nutty. Are you happy with these uh, metal stock tanks as them. beds? Yeah. Well, well, would you try to dig and grab them? You know, you like <laughs> you break your shovel. Yeah. And unfortunately, I put, you know, I made beds back here, but they're all in the shade. Same issue with these arborvitae. They used to be about 10 feet Oh, yeah, tall, their roots will just take over. And they have, they have totally tripled in size since we moved in. Yeah. And they're doing the same thing. They're taking over all the area, so the bed keeps moving out this way yeah. <laughs> toward the... This used to all just be a big driveway. Mm -hmm. And now it's become kind of like a path. Yeah, now that it has soil and water and yeah. so these some attention. stock tanks were just a way to get take a, uh, advantage of the better sun without putting anything on his building. He doesn't yeah. want anything on his, you know, touching it. Really. But these are the really good. These are those little yeah, sweet ones. Sun gold. Thank Try you. Try a couple. They're, just, they're sweet and yummy. And I just. There's not too many on here because I just picked them yesterday. I come out every day and I pick a bunch. And most of them don't ever make it into the house. I just eat them. Yeah. <laughs> I already grew radishes kale. and things like that and lettuce. I let, and there's another kale and then there's some cabbage back there. Mm -hmm. Just lots of stuff. Yeah, I really am impressed birds. with what she's able to do with the space she has back here. And, and consider that this literally is a gravel driveway. It's and now gravel. it's... There was no bed at all. Yeah. I've been piling debris against the edges, you know, and then wood chips and stuff like that. And that's why some of the things are still in pots, because where would you put it? There's just not enough space. Mm -hmm. So Missouri is beautiful, but Oregon definitely has its charms. We're here at... Silver Creek Falls, it's this whole series of waterfalls, and my mom and dad are gonna stay here. They're not feeling quite up to <laughs> trekking down all the way down there, but I wanted to go underneath the falls and show you what it's like. All right, I'll be right back. <laughs> For you two.
Oh, sweetheart. I think I'll probably just go down to the bridge there and then catch back up with my parents. My best memory of this state park was a few years back. Wendy and I came out here because I really wanted to get some good photographs of icicles. So we waited until we had a good freeze. And this place was just a frozen wilderness out here. Icicles coming down the waterfall. And you could still you could still walk behind the waterfall, but you kind of had to creep your way through all those icicles. It was beautiful, but it was a little treacherous because with the ice, you had just solid, thick ice on the paths and no traction. So This was my very first house, southeast Portland, tiny, tiny yard. I spent a lot of time here fixing this place up. Such a contrast to where I am now. It's hard to believe how I got from here to there. Speaking of getting from there to here, my next video will be that trip. Thanks for watching. Remember, your dreams are closer than the moon. Thanks for taking this break away from the moon with me.